All right, here we are for the second podcast from Chapter 7. And in uh, this podcast, we're going to learn about the techniques for studying cells, basically microscopes and whatnot. The basic thing to do when you want to learn about cells is you're going to use a compound light microscope. And in a compound light microscope, you're going to use two lenses to focus the light that will pass through the object. The first lens that you'll look through is the objective lens. And this is called the objective lens because it's closest to the object that you are looking at. For example, what's ever on the slide. The next lens is the one that's closest to your eye. This is creatively called the eyepiece or the ocular lens. Ocular refers to eye. All right. Now, each of these lenses has its own magnification power. The eyepiece is almost always 10 times. So we'll just use a 10x for 10 times. The objective lens will vary. You have a red lens known as the scanning or low power. That one's 4x. You have a medium power, which is typically a 10x. And then you'll have a high power, which would be a 40x. Now to find out the total magnification of your microscope, you have to multiply the powers of each lens. So for example, with your eyepiece being almost always 10 times, you need to multiply that by your objective. So if you're on low power, which is 4x, you would get a total magnification of 40 times. So in other words, if you are looking at a cell through a low power objective, what you see uh, through the ocular lens is actually 40 times bigger than it really is. So when you go to medium power, the medium power would be 10 times 1, or 10 times 10, which is equal to 100 times. And then if you were on high power, then you would have a 40x multiplied by the 10 times of the eyepiece, which would give you a 400 times. Now, the microscopes that we have available here at uh, CHS, they have a fourth lens known as an oil immersion lens, and that one will magnify the object 100 times. And because you're looking at it through an eyepiece, which is 10x, your total magnification is 1,000 times. All right? We don't use this lens very often. We use it mainly to look at bacteria. But that's also at the limits of resolution. Resolution is a word that basically means, is it in focus? And it deals with the physics of light. Uh, if you go above a thousand times, the image is just blurry. You just can't get it in focus. So the limit of resolution for a light microscope is 1,000 times. Now, you see how this is in red? That means you better know it. And you see these up here in red? You better know that one. And you also better know that. All right. Moving on to the next slide. Oops, we got one more here. Hey, guess what? Same stuff I just told you. All right, now let's move on. Here's a picture of a light microscope, and this is actually extremely similar to the ones that we have here at CHS. All right, let's pick a new color. How about this? All right, there's your eyepiece. Remember, the eyepiece is a 10x. Uh, they call this the observation tube. Most things that you'll see, diagrams, will cause will call this a body tube. Uh, this is a neck. Another name for it is the arm. You grab onto this when you want to make it move. All right. This stage clip that you see here, if you looked at it from the top, it'd be a piece of metal. It kind of looks like this. And then there's a clip. The clip holds the slide right there. So everything that I just put there in green, that's the slide. All right. Now that holds it in place. And you're going to use these manipulators here. Uh, this one on the top will make it go front and backwards. And this one down here on the bottom will make the slide go back and forth. All right. If you've ever seen an Etch-a-Sketch, they're basically those kind of controllers. So if you manipulate these two at the same time, you can make the slide kind of swiggly, swaggly move around the stage. All right. This is your stage again. The other type of lens that you're going to find, remember you have the eyepiece, and now you have the one that's closest to the object. Here's your objective lenses. See how that has a red stripe? That would be the 4X. See how this one has a yellow? That would be the 10X. You see how this one here is uh, probably blue? 
hard to say, can't quite tell here. That would be your 40x, okay? Uh, this empty space back here is where the fourth or oil immersion one would be, but it, it's, it's empty here because you'd see it'd be real long. All right, how do we focus the microscope? We have two focus knobs. We have a course adjustment. That's the big knob, and this one will move the stage up a whole bunch. And then we have the fine focus, which is your smaller knob, and this one is used to do it on a smaller scale. All right, so if we look at our objective lens, we've got the red one. Remember, that's 4x. And then we have a uh, yellow one, which would be 10x. And then we've got that blue one, which would be 40x. So you got uh, low power, medium power, and high power. All right, for this one, you can use the course adjustment. Same for the medium power. You use the course adjustment. When you use high power, the fine adjustment only. The reason is you don't want to move the uh, nice spelling. You don't want to use the course adjustment because you're going to move this slide so much that you're possibly going to smash it right into the tip of that, and you're going to break the slide, maybe damage the lens. So you do not want to do that one. All right, let's get rid of some of this stuff here. There we go, got rid of all of it. All right, let's go back down to these guys. This is your light source, and these lenses right in here are going to control how much light goes up into the object. The condenser is essentially going to condense the light, or in other words, make it tighter. We don't want light going out away from this little hole right here so the light can get through. So this one kind of kind of focuses the beam right up through there. Uh, the diaphragm will control uh, basically how much light goes in. Now in our microscopes uh, at school, we also have a light intensity here. Um, think of like a dimmer switch at your house. It'll do the same thing. All right. Um, those are your microscope parts. Remember, on the Moodle website, you have a quiz that deals with a picture extremely similar to this. All right, some other things that you can use to study cells, and this is one of the most common that you see in uh, modern biology. It's the fluorescent label. Fluorescent just means you have colors that glow. And what you do with these labels is you tag the molecules, a protein, a lipid, a carbohydrate, or whatever, that's found in a certain type of organelle, or you want to track that protein as it goes through a cellular pathway. So as you can see over here in these pictures, these bright green things that you see in there, those are the microtubules and microfilaments of the cytoskeleton. So they've tagged this protein to be uh, a bright green, which makes it very easy to see. The nucleus, as you can see, is this big dark blue part right in here. They, they've used a different uh, fluorescent label or tag to cover that. And then this purple stuff, these could easily be like Golgi bodies. And so what will happen is that as the researcher is looking at this through a camera, which is attached to the microscope, they should see these little purple Golgi bodies traveling up and down these cytoskeletons, um, very similar to how a train would be on a monorail, uh, like you would see at Disneyland or something like that. So these are used all the time. In fact, uh, if, you, if you purchase or use any of the free iDevice apps, they'll have videos that'll show fluorescently tagged organelles moving throughout the cell. All right, one of the really, really cool things in science are the electron microscopes. Electron microscopes do not use light. Therefore, their limit of resolution is much higher. And in fact, the limit of resolution on, on these electron microscopes can be well over 100,000 times, probably sniffing a million. So it wouldn't be uncommon to see a total magnification of like 350,000 times using an electron microscope. Uh, how about 30,000? There we go. That looks better. Right. And this one's called a transmission electron microscope. The electron beam goes all the way straight through the object. And what this one will do is it'll give you really, really nice two-dimensional features. And these are great for looking at internal cell structures. So here we have a picture of a cell that was taken using an electron microscope. Uh, right here you can see the cell membrane. These are various vacuoles. All right, we might as well label some of these here. Uh, let's see if we can move this up. There we go. All right, so this line right there, 
That's the cell membrane. Uh, you can see this thing here. It looks like a real thin stack of pancakes. That's our little Italian friend that works in shipping known as the Golgi. And then these, you see these little bubbles right in there? These are called vacuoles. These vacuoles are basically just large membrane bubbles that, that control, or actually they hold materials. And so let's imagine that this is a cell that lines your nasal cavity. And the Golgi apparatus right here has collected proteins from the ribosomes and the endoplasmic reticulum that will be over here. And it's packaged mucus. I mean, if it's going to be mucus, let's use a really nice green. Look at all that beautiful green mucus. Looks so good you can eat it. That reminds me of one of my favorite jokes. I thought it was a booger, but it's not. Yes, you can go ahead and laugh now. That's a good one. So what's happening is that you have these vacuoles full of mucus, and they're traveling this way, and through a process called exocytosis, the, the snot or mucus is going to be delivered out into your nose, trap germs, and you gotta got to blow your nose. So these are way better than those light microscopes. I mean, just look at the, all the awesome detail. You probably just never know that there was that much stuff inside a cell. All right. The uh, TEM, or transmission electron microscope, has a sister. It is known as the scanning electron microscope. And these give you some of the best pictures in all of biology. These give you the... 3D images of the surface. What happens is the electrons hit the object and they are reflected back. So just like light hits the object and reflects back, this time we're using electrons. And what you can see right here is this cell right there, this is a white blood cell. It's called a macrophage. Macro means big, phage means to eat. This is a big eater. And what it's doing is it's sending out these little cytoplasmic extensions and it's actually coming over here, and it's going to collect these bacteria. And what this cell is going to do, and it's starting to do that here, especially in this area right there, it is going to engulf these bacteria and eat it. This is how your immune system fights off infection. And you get the great detail of this because you're using one of these scanning electron microscopes. They're just absolutely fantastic. Right. That will conclude this podcast. So uh, check back for the next one when we go into the actual cell parts.